Mary Queen of Scots was a constant thorn in the side of Queen Elizabeth I. The Scottish monarch had a genuine yet tenuous claim to the English throne, however her relationship with England's Queen would present as one of Elizabeth's greatest threats. By the end of the 1560s, she faced a range of threats from home and abroad. These threats would culminate in 1588 with Philip II of Spain sending the Spanish Armada to invade England. More on this later, however today's video focuses mostly on Mary Queen of Scots and why she was incredibly dangerous to Elizabeth. So dangerous that Elizabeth would order her execution. To support the channel, please remember to subscribe. As the great granddaughter of Henry VII, Mary would be the next in line to the English throne following the death of Elizabeth I, the last of Henry VIII's children. Elizabeth when ruling England had a number of problems to deal with, however one key problem was religion. Ever since Henry VIII's reformation and the creation of the Church of England, England had been switched between Protestantism and Catholicism. Elizabeth had recently returned England to Protestantism, following Bloody Mary or Mary I's reign. When Mary Queen of Scots was 18, she returned to Scotland after living in France to reign as Queen of Scotland. Mary was a staunch Catholic and much of her court and subjects were Protestant. In 1565, Mary married her first cousin, Henry, Lord Darnley, and gave birth to her son, James. In 1567, suspicion arose when her husband was murdered during his recovery from smallpox. Darnley was allegedly smothered, however an explosion rocked his accommodation and he was found dressed only in a nightshirt in an orchard. Mary would waste no time and in fact would quickly marry the Earl of Bothwell which greatly angered the Scottish nobility. They were so angered that they forced Mary to abdicate and gave her throne to her one year old son, James. Mary was imprisoned by these nobles, however she escaped from prison but was forced to flee into England, crossing the border. Initially she expected her cousin Elizabeth I to take pity on her and give her refuge, however she was immediately imprisoned. For the next 19 years, she would be switched from castle to castle, whilst Elizabeth made up her mind on what to do with her cousin. She had a number of choices, with one even being helping Mary to regain her throne in Scotland. However, Elizabeth's hand was eventually forced. Mary became the centre of a number of Catholic plots against Elizabeth. All of these had the same objectives, to restore Catholicism as the main religion of England and replace Elizabeth with Mary Queen of Scots as the Queen of England. The final plot that acted as a nail in the coffin for Mary was the Babington plot, in which she was caught sending coded messages in beer barrels agreeing to this devious plot. It's fair to say, Mary after 19 years in prison was desperate, she had lost completely everything. Finally in 1587, Elizabeth was persuaded to end the threat to her throne once and for all and ordered the execution of Mary Queen of Scots. A delegation of Elizabeth's representatives arrived at Fotheringhay Castle on February 7, 1587. Here they informed Mary of her fate, saying that her execution would be carried out the next day between 7 and 8 o'clock. Mary would allegedly thank them for the good news, saying she'd been prepared for death for the last 19 years after her imprisonment. She begged the envoys to give her some time to make her will and sort out her affairs. This request was denied, with the Count of Shrewsbury saying, No madame, you must die. Be ready between 7 and 8 in the morning. It cannot be delayed a moment. Mary then spent the rest of her evening writing letters to her family and friends saying goodbye and also spent time praying. On the day of her execution, it is said that at Fotheringhay Castle, the scaffold had been erected in the middle of a large room, possibly the Great Hall. It measured 12 feet along each side and 2 feet in height and was covered by a coarse cloth of linen. The execution would take place in Fotheringhay's Great Hall, which today isn't standing. Mary entered the room with grace and majesty. The scaffold was reached by two or three steps and furnished with the executioner's block, a cushion with her to kneel on, and three stools for her and the Earl of Shrewsbury and Kent who were sent to witness the execution. The executioner and his assistant fell immediately to their knees and asked for forgiveness as was typical before an execution as they would request the pardon of those who they were putting to death. Mary replied with, I forgive you with all my heart, I hope you shall make an end of all my troubles. Her servants Jane Kennedy and Elizabeth Curl then helped Mary remove her outer garment. 
they revealed a velvet petticoat and a pair of sleeves in crimson brown, which is the liturgical colour of martyrdom in the Catholic Church. Mary was then blindfolded by Kenny, with a white veil embroidered in gold. She then knelt down onto the cushion in front of the block, showing no signs of faltering. Witnesses were said to have been moved by her bravery, and that some of the witnesses were even in tears. Her last words were, Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Mary was not beheaded with a single strike. Previously, queens such as Anne Boleyn had been beheaded by a master swordsman. However, Mary's execution was done by an axe. The first blow that the executioner struck missed her neck and struck the back of her head. The second blow severed the neck, except for a small bit of sinew, which the executioner cut through using his axe. Afterwards, he held her head aloft and declared, God save the queen. At that moment, the hair that the executioner had held onto turned out to be a wig, and Mary's head fell onto the ground, revealing her short grey hair. A witness said that Mary's lips stirred up and down for a quarter of an hour after her head was cut off. Accounts also state that Mary's clothing, the block, and everything that was touched by her blood was burnt in the fireplace of Fotheringhay's Great Hall to prevent relic hunters. When Elizabeth learnt about the news of Mary's execution, she was furious. She stated that the Privy Council and her advisers had acted without her authority. For this, she threw one of her lead advisers into the Tower of London for 19 months. Mary Queen of Scots' request to be buried in France was refused by Elizabeth. She was buried in a Protestant service in Peterborough Cathedral, in one final act of Elizabeth imposing her rule over Mary. Her entrails, which were removed in the embalming process, were secretly buried within Fotheringhay Castle. In 1612, her body was exhumed, and her son James I of England ordered that she would be reinterred in Westminster Abbey, in a chapel opposite Elizabeth's tomb. Although many interpret Mary's execution as a brutal act of murder, following an imprisonment which lasted almost two decades, it is clear that Elizabeth had reached the end of her tether with Mary. Elizabeth couldn't face any more issues with Mary, however her problems would only continue and escalate with the Catholic Philip II of Spain sending his armada the following year. Once again, thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Thanks once again for watching.